the Chads is here. We we're walking around the uh, Knoxville pitting uh, stand area, and we ran across this thing right here. What's and she nice? has a big ass camera in her in her hand. I don't know what this is about. Anytime <laughs> a lady's holding something big and black, I get insecure. But hold on, what that what what are you doing? This your name for the people is originally you're like an OG in a way. You got a name that doesn't even exist. It's like a ghost name, Speed Shift <laughs> Haley. It's like. If somebody's coming on the scene new, what the hell is speed shift? You know, I mean, what, what, but, but what, 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 what are you doing here? And does it bother you that you're still named speed shift Haley? What, what's the deal there? No, absolutely not. So for those of you new, uh, new to the sport, um, if you haven't heard of speed shift TV, um, it was a streaming broadcast company that specialized in dirt track racing, also some snowmobile racing, kind of all over the place. A year ago, we sold to flow sports and flow racing. So that's why I'm here now. I am flow storm. Flo Shanley. I have not yet changed my wait, name wait, on social Flo media. Wait, Flo Shanley? Flo Shanley. It doesn't... That does... Speed Shift Haley is mean. just like a shirt. That's why I have... Do you have a shirt? Haley. I don't have a shirt. I will make it. I don't it. know if anyone would buy my shirt. I, I think a lot of people... I'm not <laughs> even reading the comments at this point. This is so bad. No, but... um, <laughs> So, that's where the originating of Speed Shift is from, which is kind of... Speed Shift was kind of like... You see a lot of the local and stu uh, IMCA stuff. That was kind of what... Speed Shift did also the USAC. They had the USAC series, I believe, the last year mm -hmm. that they did that. So, yes. you are here with this. Did I say Rona? Oh, Ronin. Ronin. Okay, I was I was getting scared. <laughs> um, so you're here walking around with that for what? What's so, the deal? What I am doing. The re what brought me back to Iowa is the Sage Fruit Front Row Challenge. I'm going to be there tomorrow, reporting live on Flow Racing. And that's Oscaloosa. Most people know that's Oski Front Oscaloosa. Row Challenge area. That's right. So what I'm doing tonight here at Knoxville is I'm just gathering content for Flow. I'm going to be talking to, of course, Terry McCarl. I'm going to grab a few other drivers to get sound bits to promote tomorrow's race. Um, but at any rate, it's good to be back to sprint car racing. I'm my sprint car friends. So that's what I'm doing tonight. So you're here with Flow in a Dirt Vision pond does that intimidate the dirt vision people is there a broadcast war going on out there or? i don't think it would intimidate them i'm not here to step on any toes no dirt i'm not saying are, i'm not no, saying no, step on toes i'm just saying dirt vision's trying to be a shark in this world and and, and flows the you know the other shark you and, know and you know what dirt vision is absolutely crushing it right now i tune in every chance i get to watch the outlaws to watch Hussets, um williams grove you name it jacksonville got it going on. weekly Jackson, Jacksonville. You One of the most it, underrated so. racetracks in the world, Jacksonville. I, I, have you been there? I've been there. Yep. It I used to work with Power Eyes, so I've seen many okay. races there. I've seen the Outlaws there, which was top tier. Um, so no, I'm, I'm here. I'm. I understand. I'm in their playground. I'm not trying to, you know, step on any toes, like I said. So we're all. We all got to play in the same sandbox. Um, so I'm going to. I'm going to be respectful of them. And like I said, they're crushing it. I'm a fan. Okay. So there was a little debate, and you may not be able to talk on this. Okay. At all, but. Dirt Vision forced an upcharge for the USA Nationals with the late models. Sure. And I think they're doing that this week. Mm -hmm. Flows 150, you get everything, chili bowls, all that. What do you think about, you know, Dirt Vision, I believe, is 300 a year, 349. And then upcharging for the big races, too. What do you, what do you think about a situation like that? Do you think that's fair, or should it be like a 12-month, like, flow, you get everything for one price type deal? What I think that... Dirt Vision is doing very well is that they offer the annual and the monthly package. Um, I know it's very, very frustrating for fans when it is a subscription and an event isn't included in all subscriptions. That said, I don't know the particulars of their agreements with the tracks. And I, that's usually what it comes down to. Um, a promoter or a track or series may want one thing. Um, so I I guess I don't know, know the particulars of it. Um, you can see you that know. at Cedar Lake, but here, I mean, they, they're they they're the guy all year. I mean, they're, they're, they're been, weekly racing, everything. Yeah, and, and back back in the speed shift days, I remember there were times too when there'd be marquee events that a promoter didn't want part of the speed shift VIP subscription. So I I see it from that perspective too. Um, so I guess that's my that's my very like unexciting middle ground stance on it. Oh, okay, literally in the middle ground. We yeah. almost fell walking across the track. By the no, way, that's how I even ran into you. <laughs> so obviously a lot of cars here. Uh, most of the cars that are going to be here this week are here tonight. Yeah. What are you thinking? I know you pay attention. Obviously you watch. Who do you think's looking strong? What do you think's looking right? What look? What's looking wrong? Man, I uh, of course this was 360s, but Geo Sales, he, he was when he won. What was it? 2019. Yes, in the 71 car was his first show up. Yeah, that was, was incredible. Like, I like what we saw from him just last night. 
Um, you know what I love to see out here at Knoxville is our PA posse. I ran into the 48 D trick down there. I want to see our PA guys do well. Speaking well, of the devil, Brock Zierfoss. Yeah, Brock Zierfoss. Had, had a little bit of a tough year so far. Yeah, yeah. But uh, trying to turn it around, you know, had a lot of wrecks early in the year. I mean, it's hard when you're on the tour first time and, you know, yeah. six cars are trashed by month three or whatever. You know, it's hard. For and sure. most of the time it ain't your fault. It's just bad luck of the draw. Right. Brent Marks, obviously another guy who's a, a underrater. Uh, you know, it doesn't really hit the, the radar for a lot of people, but mm -hmm. he wins like almost all the big races. I believe he picked up Summer Nationals, or did he pick up Summer Nationals? He picked up something big over there against the Outlaws. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you got locals here, the McCarls. Brian Brown, is this going to be like the Dell Earnhardt Senior track for him, where it's like 20 years of trying and then he finally wins it? Or I think I think Brian Brown is overdue for a, for a big one here. Um, he's definitely going to be one of the strongest runners, in my opinion. And then there's this overrated guy, horrible, I mean, superiorly overrated guy named Kyle Larson <laughs> that people think is just a shoe-in to win this thing. What what do you think about Kyle's chances? I think you never rule out Kyle. Never rule out Kyle. I know you and I may disagree on that. Hey, man. I, I watched him win in the, at the Prairie Dirt Classic. That was heart-wrenching heart for me, but... You know, it, it, you're going quiet. Are you a Larson Knight? I I don't pick favorites. Uh, okay. I do. Okay, you know what? That's okay. a lie. Okay. I'm a race fan. Okay. I do have okay. favorites, but I will say I respect the hell out of the talent of Kyle Larson, be it in a, a midget sprint, late model, whatever he straps into. And then, of course, Sheldon just waxed ass at I-55. And then yeah. you, you got uh, Tyler Courtney, got the King's Royal now. Dude, how incredible was that? That was insane. I actually accidentally, like literally, got drunk, stumbled in the stands, and sat next to somebody who waved me up. It's the Chaz. And I ended up sitting, like, right next to the Clausen family. And so when that was all happening, I was right next to the Clausen family as they're screaming and hooting and hollering and crying and all that. So that was kind of cool, randomly, out that, of nowhere. It was so cool. I had, uh, last year when I was here for the Front Row Challenge with Miranda out, and I made my way to Dingus. I, I remember having a beer with Tyler Courtney, and that was, like, my claim to fame when he went on and won the King's Royal. I'm like, I know that guy. I know that guy. That's my, that's my claim to fame. Yeah, so you shared a beer, so you have some re resemblance with him? Or? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we, we talk. We talk once or twice. You didn't yeah, nickname like, him guy. Sunshine, did you? You didn't give him the oh, nickname. No. Have you nicknamed no. anybody? Have I nicknamed anybody? Um, not in this sport, no. Okay. I have in Snowcross. That's another sport I work in. Uh, there's a girl, uh, her name is Inanna Hauger. She was just ripping whole shots in the Pro Wins class this year, so she became whole shot Hauger. Uh, Hunter Patno became the Ocho. He took on the number eight this last year, but I can't take credit for any sprint time. Okay, okay. So media, that's one thing I think kind of doesn't get too much credit for what they do. Yeah. It's a lot of work doing all this stuff. How much does somebody like you just do on a typical night? I mean, on the camera and talking, that's one thing. You could be having, or you could be looking real nice on camera and talking and doing the right thing. Then right as you cut off, you're bitching at somebody who did something wrong. And, and why didn't you give me that? You made me look like an idiot. You know what I'm saying. You're laughing because you, you probably had this happen before. I myself no one makes myself look like a bigger idiot than I do but that I is so really, humbling I think so it's humbling really deceiving when you see someone on camera and even the people off camera the product that you see online or on the broadcast that is the that is the tip of the iceberg there's so much more below the surface so like for example when I know you can attest to this too is as soon as the race gets done you still got five six hours of work ahead of you I'm um, just like any some of these teams do um, if not a long drive to the hotel to try and find any shrapnel of Wi-Fi to upload your content yeah, that is really bad, especially at, at uh, even if you have a hot spot at a big event when there's a lot of people, oh, yeah. all the cell connection is destroyed, which destroys the hot spot connection as well. It does. It's it's difficult. And you know what? Um, it's it's such a grind. And, and like I said, there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that people people don't know about. It's a labor of love. It's, it's not easy. We're out here in the in the elements all day putting our equipment on the line. To, to well, and you're filming. And, I mean, people don't understand the... the the grind and time-consuming thing of called of this thing called editing yes. is like the most boring, time-consuming thing you can technically do. That's right, and I like I when I set out to to embark on this career in the media, I had a college professor once who had said, "You cannot just be a reporter. You cannot just be a, a host. Whatever you want to do, you need to be a Swiss Army knife. You need to be able to do it all. You don't have to be perfect at it all, but that is what's going to give you a competitive edge." And my golly, has that been true? Um, I got my big break on on camera. That's that's always been the dream, um, but I couldn't have done that if I would not have made my way through the production, the PR, the media side, and that's where I'm. I still am today. 
Um, so it, you know, if you ever want to work on camera, people ask me my advice: is you got to be your own producer at times, and you just got to right. roll up the sleeves. And well, look at work. YouTube. I mean, I'm wearing a uh, Tanner Holmes. I mean, Tanner Holmes has literally made a life. Uh, yes. Uh, what, what Hunt the Front is like possibly the biggest thing in dirt track racing right now. Right. I mean, I did an interview with Hunt the Front at Bristol. I did an interview with Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson, and the numbers on those, Hunt the Front killed them all by like 10,000 views. Yes. That is strong, and they don't have no, they don't need a flow. They just need themselves. So right. independent, independent media is on a rise also, I think. It is. There is. There's such a demand for it, and we saw that just skyrocket over the past year and a half with COVID. People are home. They're consuming more content than ever, and not only just consuming content, but they're looking for differentiation. So when you have someone like a Tanner Holmes, or you know, I know um, David Gravel does one also. Vlogs Swindell Speed like, Labs Swindell's does a real good one that doesn't amazing. get no views. I don't. Well, they get views, but compared to what they're doing, you we know the time that it takes to make one of those, and when they're flipping one around in 12 hours, yeah, from a race night in to put out. The next day at one o'clock. Yeah. That is a lot of work between the GoPros, the footage, the audio they're splicing in. And Dylan, I mean, Dylan is a god to like shoot all that footage all race day long and have to sift through that and then. And that's a little skinny redheaded kid, right? Uh, no, that is. Uh, that's Noah. Noah is still working for them. Dylan, I believe. Don't quote me on this, but I believe he's. I think he might be their primary video guy. I haven't seen him Okay, okay. Minute, but okay. yeah, I know no But I think it's only like one or two guys that do it all. Which blows my mind. You look at the caliber of product they put out, yes. and it's like those guys are... And then, and then I say it doesn't get views, but 3,000 views is... I mean, it's hard on YouTube. YouTube's probably the hardest platform to get a view on. Mm -hmm. um, but still, when you see other videos that just get, you know, the tens of thousands and the production's twice as less, it's like, come on now. What they have pioneered, though, in... And they have a long list of things they've really pioneered and done very, very well with their, their marketing media. TikTok, crushing it for our sport on TikTok. I'm kind of new to TikTok, so... It's so hard to get used doing. to t TikTok. It's I mean, different. it's just so hard, though. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it's weird. Yeah. It's an algorithm in the brain to really like that stuff, I guess. For sure. Well, and then TikTok, the algorithm on TikTok is literally based to put videos that you want. It, it like, learns you personally. Yeah. So that you get stuck in front of your phone, which... Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, people always complain about stuck in front of the phone, but if they ain't stuck in front of the phone, they ain't watching me and they ain't watching you. Ain't so, I mean, we're screwed. I mean, so we can't be too hypocritical in, in criticizing phone time. No, not at all. Okay, okay, okay. But yeah, I think a lot of the media people just need, you know, get some respect, especially like you were saying, the off-camera people, it's probably more than what you see, you know, people and then time and, and ability. Yes. I mean, all the overlays, everything to get it right, switching cameras around, all that, audio levels. I mean, it's just a whole nother game. It is. It is. And, you, and people don't even know their name. They know Speed Shift Haley, but the people actually, you know, doing the producing work, they don't know who they are at all. Sure, sure. And I and there's one, you know, if it's one message I want to get across to people on behalf of people in the media is that we are we are cheerleaders for these drivers. As big, we are race fans at heart. If we weren't, we wouldn't be here. Uh, we are here to make these drivers and teams look really good, and that's that's what we want to do. And okay. we have fun doing it. Okay, I'm holding you up. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. Good, good. You're gonna go talk to McKenna Hassey now. I am. I'm gonna say hi to her. Now look out. She might. Don't try to fight her because she knows Taekwondo. She's got some guns, man. She's got guns. She's got Oh, oh, you're talking about like guns. I was oh, like, yeah. yeah, I was okay, okay. The gun laws in Iowa are weird, you know. They can grow corn and soybean, but you can't have a, a rifle pistol. Or she's whatever. she's a badass, along with the 14K Corey, colossal man. She's Girl from gang. Minnesota, correct? Yeah, uh, correct. She, we grew up 15 minutes from each other, and we did not know that until like a year ago. Um, so I, I feel bad. I feel like I've missed out on a lifetime. So they got the tornado. girl, the girl power corner is yeah. over here at, in turn four. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's where you're going. I'm gonna go say hi. Okay, okay. That's halfway sexist. I'm just saying. No, 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 no. Hey. So much talent. So much talent. Okay, okay. Equality. I got you. All right, thank you. You can call me Janet Dawson and I'm